All right, Senate Bill 23. The table's yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I bring to you today uh, Senate Bill 23, which uh, criminal procedures provide relative to de temporary detention of a person in custody pending a bail hearing. And all this uh, bill is doing is adding the court upon, right now, upon motion of the prosecuting attorney. It said that the judge and magistrate may order the temporary detention of a person. And what the court is asking for is just that they be added in determination that if additional information is needed in order to set the reasonable bail, that the judge or magistrate may also uh, order a temporary detention of a person in custody who is charged with the commission of, a, of an offense. So it's just adding the judge themselves that they can also make that determination. All right, Senator Price. Um, this is... Uh a slight change to the Gwen's law. Um, as far as green cards in support, we have uh, Shannon Swain, Darren Allman, Mr. Pete Adams, Charles Ballet, District Attorney of Plaquemines Parish, Dar Darren Allman, a District Attorney from Jefferson Parish, Jody Fortunato, Jefferson Parish, Jennifer Richard, from Thibodeau, a DA, Ann Steyer, with National Association of Social Workers. Looks like we got Shannon Swain twice. Maybe I got her on the wrong bill. Taylor Robinson, uh, Louisiana Coalition, Coalition of Domestic Violence. All of those are present uh, in support. Do not wish to speak. Uh, we have, yeah, looks like we got some of the 68 here as well. Sorry. <laughs> And then uh, Nancy Michael didn't check a, a box, but it's green. Uh, Mr. Adams, uh, could you come to the table, please? Get a help. Uh, uh, Mr. Adams, uh, Senator Price has given us an outline of what the bill does. The um, this is a change to Gwen's law, is it not? Yes. Okay. Can you? How will it actually work? It's, it's, it's not just, saying Senator Price didn't do a good job, but just from it, it's just your a members' perspective, change that that you know it gives the judge more control over the the circumstances uh, of the of the Gwen's law thing because uh, uh, you know the 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 judge is in a good position to know if more di additional information is needed. So um, the the DA would make the motion. And the court finds it's not automatic. The court finds that there is more information needed before this uh, person can be uh, released. Then the judge makes a determination. Think of no fairer way to do that because so often you can't get that kind of information within three days. All right. And so, as a practical matter, the district attorney will make the motion as it stands now and then someone can be held up to five days while we get more information right and of course the defense attorney can oppose that and there's an argument uh if there's an attorney appointed up by that time if All there right. is an attorney appointed by that time then you know the judge makes that determination for the safety of the community and the victim all right and the judge is ordinarily maybe it's on a weekend or something like that where he's being approached and it's like i need more information and they're held for a longer period of time. Is that correct? That's correct. And when this bill first passed, there was a lot of concern about being able to gather this information in time. And I think this is the solution that, uh, as a practical matter, when that information is needed, it can be held. All right. Thank you. Members, Senator Colon has a question. So... The what? So right now we are up to five, no more than five days. I believe that's correct. That is that is that what we is that what we are, and so, so we're saying that a judge or magistrate um, can order a detention of a person longer than the five days. If if additional information is needed, on the okay. Case. So how much longer? I think it's an additional five days, I believe. Yeah, it's not mo not more than five, including the weekends. Right. right. Not well, more. That's present not. law. But yes, ma'am. Uh, present law, changing. as it relates to uh, the district attorney, can move for the detention, 
and this just expands it to the court could say i need more information not more than five days excluding the weekend they don't count the weekends or a holiday so if you're not counting the weekend but you're in for the weekend is really seven days yes then. ma'am but okay. it's not changing the law it's not changing that portion of it is okay it's not changing the amount of time exactly. but it's still up to seven if it's a weekend and so and that's what it if is you get now. A, if you get arrested on a friday you got you have seven days to the next Friday for them to and that's present law right so what so but you're saying in your in your proposed law that they may also order another temporary de detention to explain that to me uh, to, in my somebody my understanding of this is all this does is let the court on its own motion make make the determination that additional information is needed it doesn't extend the time at all it just just uh, adds the court on its own motion right now the district attorney has to move now okay. the court can on its own motion decide that the court the judge needs more information on this case before this person is released the person may be a danger to the community the court can recognize that on its own that's all this does okay so so basically what you're saying is the district attorney can do it now right now but you're wanting to allow a judge to do it all it does is uh, allow and the judge. It this is not our bill but this is we 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 support it because we think in certain cases the judge may want more information before they leave uh, release this person to the community it's, it may be a danger to to the spouse senator cologne we also have james dixon and lindsey bowen that might be able to put more okay. information on it for I'll, I'll hear the the, uh, the testimony thank you yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. Senator Barrow? Yes, really quickly. Um, Senator Price, because I wanted to talk to you before we came in here. Just real quick, uh, how did this bill come about, or what led you to file this bill? From the judges in the 23rd Judicial District. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Senator Barrow. Uh, we have a white card from James Dixon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adams. Uh, Mr. Dixon, if you come forward, it looks like we may have a question. And then we have a red card from Lindsey Bolin or blowing if she would come forward um she's present we'll provide information if requested we also have red cards from lacdl uh, louisiana association of criminal defense lawyers and then we have a red card from jennifer harding relative to vote a red card from marshall burns and it looks like a red card from angela atkins louisiana now um thank you uh you two have heard some of the discussion here where we just need a little bit of uh education on how this works in practice now and uh, information from you mr dixon and why you would oppose it all right um james dixon i'm with the louisiana public defender board um so the way it the way it, it generally works <coughs> is you're, you're talking about a proceeding really where there's, there's no lawyer um, public defender board has not been appointed yet so you have you what we do though is when the prosecution files a motion um, they will generally provide us with a courtesy copy at which point you might be on notice if they provide you with one you might be on notice that this process is taking place if the judge is allowed on their own to do this we will have no notice there will be no lawyer in the room for the defendant the results going to be um, you're going to have a judge on on their own um, who say we're going to hold you without bail um, this is going to be in there's going to be no hearing there's going to be no um, adversarial hearing there's there's going to be no counsel um, and the person's going to go to jail without representation um, without a hearing and basically because the the judge has said I need more information from where I'm sitting, uh, that seems to be a really nice invitation for litigation. Um, that, that, that looks to me like it's brewing up to a class action suit um, in federal court where um, I kind of wonder why I'm a state employee as, as opposed to private counsel because this one, um, it would seem to me, uh, just, just you're taking the adversarial process out of it completely because a judge on their own can say, I'm holding you. Okay, Mr. Dixon, uh, also, just to make sure that we're in the proper lane, this is in the 
relatively narrow lane of domestic violence only, correct? It is. Um, and, you know, judges have lots of tools in their toolbox when it comes to setting bail. Um, you have GPS. You have, um, mon- you, have, you have ankle monitors. You have bail. Um, and every day, judges come into court in very difficult situations where people are charged with, with very serious crimes, and they, they manage to get around it and set bail. Um, people are charged with murder, rape, armed robbery. The judge manages to set bail. Um, I, I, I really, with the tools that a judge has, I just don't see the benefit of a um, non-adversarial situation where a judge on their own can simply say, I need more time. Um, and keep in mind, there's nothing in this article that says there has to be a motion by the prosecutor anymore. The judge can just do it. So um, those, those, are my, those are the concerns from, from the Louisiana Public Defender Board. All right, Senator Mills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In your experience, has there any been has authority been given of this magnitude to any other situations to to judge? Is this kind of a first time? Uh, we've never seen it before. So there, this, there's there's always there's always a you know there's there's always the the, the state is asking for a bond. Um, but to give a, or, a a judge this type of authority, have you you seen it before? I haven't. No, where they can just on their own hold someone without setting bail for a period of time, without any sort of motion or any information to allow them to make that decision, which is what this does. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Senator Mills. Um, would the committee like to hear from the Senator Barrow? Sorry. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will you just take me through the process as it stands now? And, and maybe you did that, but just take me through what happens now. And then as I've listened to you, what will happen if this bill passes is the judge would have sole or could have sole yes. authority to do so. All right. So the way it generally works, um, there is something called a 72 hour hearing. Um, and let's, that, let's back up. Somebody's charged with domestic violence. Yes. Okay. I, I, or, or, or there are other offenses too, but at this point we'll talk about um, domestic violence. They've been charged with domestic violence. At 72 hour court, um, your judge generally sets bail um, and appoints counsel. So when they go in, they have no lawyer unless they have hired counsel. So someone who, for example, would be generally appointed to the public defender doesn't have a lawyer at this point. And often there's no lawyer in the room because the whole point is they're going to appoint us to the case. So in, in this instance, you'd have the, you'd have the defendant um, in the room charged with this charge at 72 hour court. And the judge on his own can say, I need five more days. You're not getting bail. And I'm appointing the public defender office. So you're kind of putting the, putting the you know, horse behind the cart there. Um, and so you have an instance where someone has been in jail for three days already, the judge on his own says, I need more information. And but, okay, that, that's what the bill would do now. Yes. What happens now? I mean, oh, the, the way the law is written now. So the way it's written now is, is the, the prosecutor files a, 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 a motion that says, um, we need to hold this person for a few more days for the following reasons, and they will set out the reasons. Um, and so what will happen is generally, um, and there are problems with that too, but generally, you, the best case scenario, they'll provide a copy of that motion to the public defender's office. So we know to put someone in the courtroom because there's going to be a hearing. Um, and so that, that's how that works. Without that, without that motion, we don't know to put someone in the room. Okay, okay. Is the thing. Okay, I see, all right, thank you. Thank you, Senator Barrow. Um, I don't see any more questions. Uh, does the committee? Uh, yeah, there was additional uh, red cards from vote. Will Harrell and uh, Darren. Uh, no, ma'am. Just red card. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the red cards, please. Uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Cologne. Um, Senator Cologne. Because the gentleman is worried about the motion, can we just amend it to say that they still have to do that motion to let the motion that he's talking about? Um, we, can we amend it to do that? So, staff, somebody. I, I think I think what you're suggesting, as far as the motion, ordinarily comes. There's no motion. 
Well, the motion comes from the district attorney currently. Right, but did, did the, you, didn't the you judge just say can that do it when the, if the judge decides to do it himself, there is no motion? Uh, under under this statute, um, there, no motion is required. The judge can just on his own. Uh, so the judge, so the DA comes into court. The That's DA has not filed said. a motion. They haven't asked for any special, um, uh, any bond consideration. It's just normal, you know, set bond. Um, and the judge on his own says no. Uh, I'm going to give it five more days. So uh, I guess my question is, would it be better if the judge has to do that same thing that the DA has to do so that we have the motion? That, that, that's where the investigation comes about. So, Senator Colon, so, I think that would be within the judge's inherent power. That would just be called doing it ex parte. Uh, he could do it himself if the law passed, if we made this uh, amendment to the yeah, law. But what if he doesn't do it? Then if he doesn't do it, it's just like it is ordinarily. He's, it would be in the record that the judge made a determination. It would be a, a note in the... The DA has to do the motion. The DA has to do a motion. If he wants to detain him under okay, this but law. But the judge would not have to do the motion. No, the judge... If, he want, if the judge... The DA has... DA, the DA has... The, uh, the, the DA has to do a motion to detain. The judge does not. So, therefore, you're giving the judge more authority actually than the DA because he doesn't have to ask for the motion to detain. Right, but I believe that's in his inherent power. Or well, he don't have the power, power right now to do it at all. So, to detain? Right. Yeah. I mean, he does have the power to detain, but what you're saying is if he has the power to detain, then he shouldn't even need the bill. <laughs> All right. What do you say to that, Mr. Dixon? So, I, the the way it stands now, um, the 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 state files the motion, and the judge can rule. If if he has if he believes he has sufficient facts, he can rule that um, we'll, we're going to have a hearing in five days on bail. He, he can do that now. So so I, I'm not sure that you really need the, the judge in there at all. I, th I think that covers. I think what the the way the law is now, it is already presented. The, the the challenge we have is that we have no way of really rebutting anything the DA is saying because we don't have a police report, um, we have no information. Um, that that's kind of the challenge now, from where we're sitting. But but you but, have to do that regardless anyway. You have to rebut it. Yes. On a short time schedule. Yes. All right. Sen uh, do you have more questions, Senator Colon? Senator White. Just real quick. To, to go in and you don't know the district attorney is not going to file that motion. Uh, the accused, are you going to be representing him? Only once we're appointed, Tim. We're, we're at this point. We're not. We're not. We're not appointed. We we can't just step in and handle it because we don't know if they have private counsel. Um, you know, they they you could be you could be violating their right to private counsel if we just step in. You could be interfering with the relationship I, I between see. the. I understand. Okay. I thought maybe you either they would have private counsel or, or you'd be representing them when they come in for the hearing. No, no. Gen no. If, if there's no motion from the DA, we have no reason to believe that the judge won't set bail. Okay, thank you. All right, um, Senator Price. I, I don't, I don't see any other questions. But we're going to take a little break, um, short minute here, while Senator Dorsey considers where she is. But Senator Price, if you'd come back. All right. Um, do we have any further questions by the committee? Yes, ma'am. Senator Colon. Senator, so if the judge, the judge is the judge, um, the judge is the judge, and he can do pretty much what they want to do, right? Yes. They can, I mean, even in this situation, so if the judge can already do, detain the person even if they want to, why do we need the bill? Well, 
in, in meeting with the judges, my understanding was because this is about domestic violence, they wanted a little more latitude if if they knew something uh, uh, about it during the hearing or before the hearing that they could also call have the hearing uh, because it's they're put in a precarious situation with with domestic violence and sometimes they don't want to just let somebody back out to go out and sometime what happened in the best oh, I understand cases. That clearly. Yeah. So they, they wanted a, a little more leeway into being able to hold an individual. So that's why it said right now, it said, it all it says the prosecuting attorney must file that motion. They wanted the latitude to say that if they see something there also, that they could also have that right to say, look, we're going to hold you an additional couple of days till we have this hearing. If I've actually been a victim of domestic violence, and I understand, in fact, I set up the domestic violence program in the clerk of court's office a hundred years ago, so I understand the threat from that. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I still think the judge has all kinds of authority. And even if they didn't have this bill, they could still hold somebody if they thought that there was something that uh, might happen. I think they already have that authority, but I'm not going to try to kill you, Bill. Just, uh, um, just. All right. Thank you, Senator Clown. Senator Price, if you would close. Well, in, in, in closing, it, it was through a conversation with, with some judges, and they. 23rd Judicial Court. Okay. I just think about it. Yeah. it look, and I have no problem if you want to wait to get, to get further information. Okay. All right. So Senator Price has closed on his bill. I think we have an understanding of what it does. Maybe not complete. We're, I'm slightly confused on it myself. Uh, but if I get it right, ordinarily under detention hearing, you have a certain amount of time. But in a, the special case of a domestic violence case, the district attorney can ask uh, for, for more time as far as a detention center barrel. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I, I, uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I, I see that we're referring to domestic violence a lot, but this does not just apply. Yes, it does. It does just apply to domestic violence? Yes, yes. It's under the Gwen's Law provision. Okay. And um, so Gwen's Law is – yeah, well, I, I I'm, I'm going to read the rest of them to you just so we have a okay. complete understanding. A uh, contradictory bail hearing is provided by this paragraph may be held prior to setting bail for a person in custody who is charged with domestic abuse battery, violation of protective orders, stalking, or any felony offense using mm -hmm. involving the use of threatened use of force or a deadly weapon upon the defendant's family member or upon the defendant's household member, the defendant's dating partner. So it's not just domestic violence. Um, okay, I, I just, uh, I, it just gives me a little pause, Senator, and I really wish I had talked to you before, but I'm not going to kill it either. Um, maybe we can work through it between right. here and the floor. All right, sounds like we're ready to vote. Thank you, Senator Barrow. Senator Price has closed. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Senator Carter has moved to report the bill favorably. Is there any opposition? Seeing no opposition, the bill will be reported favorably. Senator Price? Thank you, and I'll be willing to work and, and have more conversation with each of you.